All right, friends, we've got two new words that we're going to learn about today and talk about what they mean. Um, we're going to look at what an angle is, and we are going to look at what in the world is a degree. And no, we're not talking about a fancy piece of paper that you get after going to college. It's a different kind of degree that we're going to talk about. All right, but first things first, um, if you've never done a video like this before, Basically, you're going to become friends with that pause button. So anytime you need to gather supplies, um, pause to work out a problem, or think about your answer to a question, you can simply pause the video, give yourself some time to do what you need to do, and then push play again when you're ready to go. It really is dependent on you to be an active participant in this module. You should take ownership of your learning pause the video and really try to think about the problems in order to learn best. It's not as helpful for you to just watch the video through, I promise. At the end of each video, there will be an exit ticket. Your teacher will let you know how to submit your answers, but the prompts will be shown on the screen. Okay. Anytime that you need to review, please feel free to rewatch the video. Okay, so first things first. What I want you to do, and you can pause the video in order to do this, is I want you to make a paper circle just like mine. It's very easy to do. All I chose to do was I found a little cup, turned it upside down on a piece of paper, drew my circle and cut it out. Once you do that, I want you to figure out a way to find the exact middle of your circle. Not just guessing, not just putting a dot there, but actually figure out a way to find the middle. Once you do that, I want you to draw a ray from that middle point to the edge of your circle. Go ahead and pause the video while you, um, while you work out your first part. Okay, so you may have chosen a different um, strategy, but what I would do is in order to find the middle, I would fold my circle in half two different ways. And where those two halves meet up is going to be the center. Okay, so I'm gonna mark my point right there in the middle. So then you were supposed to draw a ray from that point to the edge of your circle. Okay. So that's about what mine looks like. Um, I have a digital version here. So now we are going to build what's called an angle. So what I want you to do is on your paper, on your circle, draw another ray from the center of the circle to another point, um, to another point on the edge. So you're creating a second ray with this middle point. That's the one I created digitally. Yours may look a little different. You may have chosen to make your ray over here, and that's totally fine. All I wanted you to do was create another ray. So essentially what you just did is you created an angle. An angle is that shape that's created when you have two rays that share an end point. So this section right here on my paper is an angle, just like this section right here on my digital version is an angle. But the thing is, as you notice here, angles can be different from each other. So we need a way to measure them. So let's look at how we can measure these angles. All right, it takes 360 degrees to go all the way around a circle. You may have heard people say, oh, he did a 360. That means he went all the way around, all right? So if I were to manage to slice and dice my circle into 360 individual pie pieces, that means each one of those little angles would be exactly one degree. Now, I didn't, I didn't separate my circle into 360 pieces. That would be really hard to do, and I'm not sure you would even be able to see the individual slivers because they would be so small. But you get the idea that if I sliced a circle into 360 pie pieces like this, each one would be one degree. That means that each piece would be one 360th of that entire circle. So each slice would be one degree. Now, 
instead of writing out the word degrees every time, we have a little symbol that you can use. It's this tiny circle that you put up here above your, on the right hand side of your number. Um, notice how degrees are representative of what fraction of the circle we're talking about. Well, you can use a little circle to represent the word degrees. Okay, so now it's your turn to try to figure some things out. If my whole circle, if it takes 360 of those degrees to go all the way around the circle, I want you to figure out two different things for me. I want you to figure out how many degrees a half turn would be, and I want you to figure out how many degrees a quarter turn would be. Pause the video and see if you can figure it out. So let's talk about it. Again, you may have used a different strategy than me and that's completely okay. But essentially what you needed to do is first figure out how many degrees it would take to make a half turn with my other ray, okay? So I know the whole thing is 360 degrees, right? And I wanna know what half of that would be. So what I chose to do is I decomposed 360 into 360, and I halved each one of these. I know half of 300 is 150, and I know half of 60 is 30. So if I wanted to know half of the whole thing, I can take half of my 300 and half of my 60. If I combine those, I get 180 degrees. So I know my half turn would be 180 degrees. The next thing you needed to do is figure out how many degrees it would take just to make a quarter turn, okay? Well, I already know that half a turn is 180 degrees, okay? So that would get me to here but I want to know what a quarter turn would be. Well, I know a quarter is just half of a half, so that's the strategy I chose to use to find what the quarter turn would be. So I need to divide 180 into two equal parts. Well, I know that 180 is the same as having 18 tens, so I know that half of 18 is nine. So instead of having 18 tens, if I divide 18 tens into two equal groups, I would end up with nine tens in each group. Nine tens is 90. So I know a quarter turn is 90 degrees. Another way you could have done it is you could have taken the full 360 and divided it into four equal parts to find what one quarter turn would be. Either way would work and would still get you to 90 degrees. All right, time for you to explain your learning. Your teacher will let you know how to submit the answers to these questions, but your exit ticket for this module is two different questions. Number one, in your own words, describe the relationship between an angle and a circle. Number two, explain everything you understand about degrees. So take some time, pause the video, think about your answers, and submit it to your teacher. Thanks for watching guys and happy learning.